Ooh. Episode 16 of the Quarantine Conversation. It feels like forever that we've been doing it, right? But actually, um, I haven't been doing the conversations that long. Only, uh, only for a minute. But here I am with my mans, Michael. <laughs> my, my mans and them. My man's in them, which actually we'll get into that whole story later. That was almost a movie that I made called My Man's in Them. <laughs> but um, my man's Boogie Vision, Pickney, aka Mike Boogie, um, he's a director, an assistant director, a writer, a producer, a, a quadruple threat, a probably <laughs> in this business. And he's also a fine artist. Um, so today, I want to talk to him all about those things and more as we sort of unravel this new way of living in the quarantine conversation. Episode 15, Mr. Boogie, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you, brother. And I just want to, like, really, in all seriousness, just get into and crack open the show. How has life changed for you um, since we were put under this stay-at-home mandate and since the ugly rearing of the coronavirus head? I mean, you know, things came to a standstill. Um, it's a great opportunity to kind of be silent and just kind of reassess where you are and where you want to go. Um, so, you know, I always tend to try to look at the cup half full versus half empty, you know, so, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking this as a moment, you know, um, a redirection of, um, you know, just kind of God telling us, you know, um, cause I'm a spiritual person, I'm a Christian. So to me, everything starts from that point, you know, whether he's saying, okay, so this is what it is. And I need you guys all to relax for a second because, you know, I need to get y'all refocused again you know and even you know with my film and painting everything is related to my walk you know so that's why you know i tend to look at things from that lens right on right on and i know you've been staying busy nonetheless um but filmmaking is very collaborative it's it's, right. it's got a lot of moving parts a lot of people right. um right. i've heard different ways of coping with this sort of new isolation Talk a little bit more about your coping techniques and what you're doing from day to day. Like, take us through the day of, uh, of Boogie. What are you doing, you know, when you get up? Are, you know, are you working out? Are you meditating? What are you, what are you doing to keep, you know, sort of even kids? Yeah, I mean, so it's still kind of early, so I've been able to kind of maintain a routine that I've always built. I've always been very routine-driven. You know, I came from the AD world, so... My world is very structured, very compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. So I've always been that way. And I'm a Virgo, so I'm an introvert. So I mm -hmm. don't like people anyway. So I tend <laughs> to love being inside. That's one of the reasons why I started painting as a yes. filmmaker, because I wanted to do something creative that I didn't need a 10-man crew to um, execute. You know, so, but I still, I, I love to run. So I still run and try to get a little run and gotta, gotta stay in shape. You know, I uh, write because I always like to write. So that's something I'm always working on a script. It's a great opportunity to finish a script that I've been trying to finish. You know, I'm a mixed media painter. So I use the opportunity to paint new projects. You know, um, I read the Bible. I meditate, you know, and just trying to get more um, direction, more instruction, you know, in terms of what, what, what to do next. You know, we don't have any control. And that's what the coronavirus has taught us that we don't have any control, you know? So we have to really be led, you know, higher power versus being led by ourselves. You know, because, you know, I, you know, so running, writing, painting, meditating, keeping up with the news and watching TV, but not too much. And just really trying to, you know, um, figure out what's next because everything is going to be different after this point. You know, as mm -hmm. filmmakers, it's like everything is different. So how does the world look like what does the world look like tomorrow for us as filmmakers and how do we navigate that world? I'm also spending time trying to crack that nut. Hmm. Hmm. And, I, and I notice um, I've talked to several of our, our colleagues about that, 
about what the world looks like moving forward and how do we fit into this sort of new world order right. Right. as you know producers directors creators um were you working on anything when this whole thing came down and if so where is that project at now? yeah i mean i was working on a few things when this was going down i was already working on the um, sequel to your nobody tell somebody kills you part two right in the script so i'm still doing that i was also developing a few projects um i was also you know so i have a couple projects that i was working on now that i you know got more time to work on and i just need to stay focused and dialed in you know um so and then trying to figure out what um you know i had a couple of projects that were supposed to happen i did schedules for i was going to produce and and that stuff went away but also it's kind of like you know we, we're going to get back into that same thing where we basically waiting on someone else so it's kind of like okay so how do we develop something that we could sustain ourselves you know where we can kind of be the gatekeepers ourselves because we technically still need to you know do something we still need to go somewhere else to get distribution or get financing so i'm really trying to figure out how do we you know this is a great opportunity you know mm -hmm. to build the foundation of something else because the mm -hmm. foundation that was built isn't working right now not for right. us you know so right. i think as filmmakers we we're the content creators and it's kind of like we haven't figured out the financing or the distribution exhibition you know uh part of it yet you know so i'm trying to really figure out what does that look like and how can we you know survive something like this again because they said it's going to happen again you know so how do we survive and help the other creative just like us of color survive in this instance you know and not just have the same song and dance and not have just a few people being being able to survive on a higher level and then everybody else is thrown to the wall mm. you know whoa <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I, uh, wow, that was like a thunderous voice of God just Let there be light. You know, um, one of the reasons for having these conversations is to unearth those kinds of gems. And I'm, you know, I, I'm under the same impression that you are, that this is an event that we need to learn how to survive in all of its, you know, destructive measure. How can we sustain through these blasts in order to become um, perennial uh, and, and long lasting? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for filmmakers who may not be on your level? Um, as to what they can do to sustain this kind of onslaught. Because I know you're working it out in your own realm, but are, are, is there any you know, tips that you can lend to filmmakers who are watching or just for the layman and right. how they can sustain this kind of you know, this devastating event? I mean, I feel like it, you, you you know, we all do it. I, for me, I feel like it's part of my purpose. It's part of why I was put here. And that's the reason why I do it. So if you're doing it for, if you're in this business, like we all know filmmakers that are, you know, pure in their intentions and wanting to make them and tell stories and some people that aren't, you know, so if you, if you are the latter and you don't love this and you don't want to use this for a higher purpose and you're not doing it for a higher purpose, it's going to be harder for you to dig down deep and barrel through this because the incentives aren't there you know this is all this is like breathing to me so you know finding to me a center you know a, um, a, um, a higher being to you know help get you through why you know whether you're writing a script or or writing a book or, or working on a model or whatever you're doing it doesn't really matter creatively whatever you're doing if you're singing or whatever if you don't have a higher person if you don't have a source it's going to be tough so i say find whatever that source is for you and make sure that this is what you want to do. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Because the fact is that, you know, the direction we're going is like all best are all. You know, so if this is not what you're supposed to be doing, if this is not what you love to do, then you're wasting your time. And we don't got a lot of time. Whatever that is. You know, so if, if, that's, if this is what you want to do, then write. If you want to write, write. If you want to act, work on monologues. If you want to sing, sing. 
whatever that is, you know, because that is, that's your gift and you got to live in your gift, you know, aside from whatever the world is going to do, because the world is going to keep being worldly. The world is going to do what it's going to do, but we have to be at least authentic to who we are and what we, wh who we want to become, you know, because as we see that this world is, is just, is going to do whatever it's going to do. So we have to have, to me, you know, you have to have a, 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 some standards and some parameters on what you want and what you want to do and just kind of block out the noise, figure that out. This is the perfect time to figure out what you want to do, what you would do for free, what's going to, what, what you're going to do to serve humanity. Cause ultimately that's what our gift is to serve someone else, you know? So it's, to me, it's going to, this is going to separate the men from the boys and the women from the girls who's really bought it, bought it. You know, we in these streets, we know what it takes. But everybody ain't built like that. Yeah. So this is gonna this this gonna to me this is gonna show and tell. And I and I feel like I've always been built like that. I don't know if that answered your question, but <laughs> you know, I'm smiling right now because it absolutely is. I knew I knew what to expect when I was, you know, when I asked you to do this. I knew that I was going to get the clear cut truth about everything that I asked you. Um and I knew that it was going to be no nonsensical as well. But to hear it, <laughs> I'm prepared for a lot, my brother. And I, you know, <laughs> but the stark reality of your words and the pure beauty in its truth is so inspiring to me right now that I know that whoever is watching this is going to get right up off of their behind. <laughs> They're going to start doing everything you've said so far. Um, and it's going to change uh, people's mentality and lives. Um, I like to keep these short. We've gone a little okay. bit over. Um, okay. But, and, and there, you know what? There's really nothing else that I need to ask you um, that could even go along with this i wish you well in this entire process of rebirth and rehealing and to your family and your immediate circle brother i wish you nothing but strength and blessing um and if anybody is watching this and they want to know how can i follow mr pickney how can they do it um, my website, blacknoisemedia.com, um, Instagram at Boogie Vision. Um, and I wish the same light, power, strength, covering, hedge of protection, all of that around you and your family as well. Encampment of angels, all of that to cover you, to protect you, to guide you, to lead you because you are a leader. You know, so I wish all of that on you as well, fellow black man. Thank you, Brother King. Thank you. Um, this is, uh, I have chills right now. This is <laughs> the 15th time that I've done this. Um, this is the fourth or fifth time that I've done it today. Um, I feel a tremendous sense of levity and upliftment as, as I conclude this 15th uh, episode. Um, on behalf of Michael Boogie Vision Pickney, I am Lamar Maxson. Uh, you can find me at Nonstop Show Group, Queen City Film Fest, and J, and www.queenqcffnj.com. Look for the film festival in October. If we have a COVID crisis that continues until then, we will broadcast and bring you independent films digitally on a platform that we've designed and created for the purpose of following up and continuing to uplift filmmakers from around the world. Thank you so much for watching. Boogie, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate you, man. Peace. When I got the idea to do this, I was watching a wealth seminar. And, and actually, uh, a seminar on wealth building and estate planning. Because, mm. you know, as I mentioned, I'm in Florida sort of island, a man in an island, um, mm. because my grandmother passed away. And mm. I came down here to tend to her burial and to tend to her estate. 
And in my quest for knowledge and information, um, my fiance introduced me to a, um, so a lawyer and financial planning husband and wife team. The husband mm -hmm. is a lawyer, mm -hmm. the wife is a financial planner. And they were doing a Zoom conference live mm. on Facebook wow. about all of these issues that we needed to, to sort of be up on. And I was, I was watching it and I was going, dang, I should, I should reach out to some of my people and just share stories of what we're going through. Because at that point, right. it had already been like seven to eight or nine whole days of us just being in the house. <laughs> Right. And, um, you know, with this going on like three weeks now, I've been in Florida over a month. You know, wow. I still got stuff going on in New Jersey. My sons flew back to New Jersey uh, over a month ago after the funeral. And now they're in New Jersey separated right. from us. And so, you know, there's a lot of anxiety and what might going on surrounding all that. And I decided that I wanted to have these sort of back and forth conversations because, my, you know, I'm watching my friends online post about their anxiety and we're not right. sharing and talking about it. Right, right. And normally we'd be able to, you know, interface with one another and talk about it. So right. I've been able to talk to good people that you know, Okima, Patrick, right. Ash Smith. Right. Uh, Jackie Howell King. I actually reached out to Stacy Muhammad, um, and she was going to go on earlier today, but she had something else come up. I suspect there's a lot going on in everybody's right. world, and right. so um, she asked to reschedule. But th this is the reason why I decided to do these conversations, and the more I do it, the more it just sort of ramps up. And right. you know, right. with each person, I noticed that we're saying a lot of the same things but there's a higher calling every single time mm. we mm. open up a new conversation right. it becomes right. more, more succinct right right and what you had to say today brother i think tops the cake it just it, it really does i i recognize your spirituality and i, and I respect it highly i'm um I'm, I too am a spirit, spiritual man. Um, I don't think I'm as nearly uh, in the same place that you are in terms of the advancement of your ceremony and your connection. I uh, saw that you did baptism recently, and you mm -hmm, incorporate, mm -hmm. you incorporate um, the spirit of God and the movement of Christ in all of what you do, and I have so much love and respect for that. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you one on one personally, um, because I know it's a difficult time. I know we have, we live we live a difficult right. world, and uh, I just right. respect you for for upholding those those ideals and um, and making sure that you put those things first, because it helps others to make better decisions. Right. It really does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, yeah. So cool. with that being said, thank you for, for this again and thank you for listening and, and, and giving to this conversation. And I'll let you know when it's out. You know, I'm, okay. I'm, Sounds you know, good. I think I've only released four of them so far. Uh -huh. um, okay. I sort of go through them and you know, I add lower thirds and I add a little right. bit of the Queen City branding. Right. Uh, nice, nice, nice. That's so King Branding. <laughs> you gotta do it. That's right. That's it. <laughs> I might, I might have one of these in the in the archives for you uh, for for your screening from last year. Thank you, thank some you. Other, some other goodies. Uh, yes, yes, swag, baby. Yeah, we have wonderful swag. swag bags from last <laughs> year. Um, so you know, just be on the lookout for that. And uh, okay. I, I haven't started re re really reviewing any of the films, but I saw that you submitted one. So we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. I'll definitely, don't worry, you're in. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure, we'll <laughs> all figure right, it all cool. out. And, uh, you know, um, you know we'll, 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 we'll be in touch soon, brother. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thank you, brother. All right. All right be safe. You. you too. Have a good right, one. Peace. peace.